Um, do you know where food stamps is in the in the legislative process? What it's what it's part of? It's part of the farm bill. It's part of the agriculture appropriation bill for the United States government. Um, there was a woman uh, from a, an urban area. I cannot remember what her name is. A very famous African American member of Congress who they punished one year and put on the ag committee because she. Democrat leadership didn't like her. She had done something and they punished her by putting her on the Ag Committee. And she was such a, a wonderful politician that she figured out a way to convince the farmers to take the Ag Bill and the food stamps and put them together under the theory that fewer and fewer people were involved in farming and that if the farmers didn't find an ally uh, it politically that their subsidies would go away as they became a smaller and smaller portion of the population. So the farmers, the, the farm lobby, teamed up with um, the folks who were promoting food stamps, and that's how they cobbled together enough votes every single year to pass farm bill and food stamps. Uh, we've tried regularly this year to split those two things out. We've not been able to successfully do that yet, to go back to dealing with ag, agriculture as agriculture, and dealing with food stamps as food stamps. We're not That's one thing that would be. Uh, I mean, it's a lot more than that. You say you're not going on back to seniors. Those of us that are here now, they are as far as Medicare is concerned. Our Medicare fee. Uh, They're sticking it to your doctors. What? They're sticking it to your doctors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, for example, my blood work, I generally have one test done because the family is. It's not covered. What's well, not? No. They've changed the coverage. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, that's going to, that's going to, I don't want to have, we can do a whole hearing on, a whole meeting on, on Obamacare and it's the, the reason, the challenges that I think we face as a nation, but I think you're going to, with this independent payment advisory, you're going to start to see that more and more. It's, they're going to start to limit the coverage for various things. So I didn't realize that they had uh, changed that. But I'm going to come back to you and wait until some, because you've asked a question already, so if that's okay. Because I don't want to hear, yes sir. so much um, that I got in a lot of trouble um, two weeks ago. Did you see it? Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to pay for uh, a strange concept. I wanted to pay for the disaster relief money that we spent to New York, sent to New York, New Jersey. Um, they had asked for $60 billion. And again, you can come to your own conclusions about whether or not uh, that was the right number. By the way, $60 billion is $60,000 million. $60,000 million, that's what they asked for. Um, it was actually the third largest spending bill that we've passed in the last two years. We gave New York, New Jersey $60 million. And I, I wanted to give them the money because I, I've lived through hurricanes myself. Many folks here have. Uh, and I believe the federal government needs to step up and help folks during these natural disasters. I just wanted to pay for them. That was it. I thought that was a, I, I thought that was a reasonable thing to do. 
Um, and under the theory that if it's really important to people, um, then, th um, then they will forego other things. They will make other sacrifices so that they can help their fellow citizens. I believe that. Um, and I offered a 1% across the board reduction. Um, because, by the way, uh, a lot of folks feel the way you do. Uh, people, they, they recognize the fact that if they wait for us to do targeted cuts, it'll never happen. And then until we start doing across the board cuts, it's what you would do. If you couldn't figure out what else to cut, you'd say, well, I still can't spend the money, so we'll just cut everything. A little bit. Um, and it was 1% uh, across the board cut. I got two thirds of the Republicans to vote for it, no Democrats. Um, and it didn't pass. Um, but I think you're going to continue to hear us to, to make that case because I've heard long enough now, well, across the board cuts, they're, they don't work too well. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not efficient. I'm like, that's fine. Um, so you give, me either, you give me the efficient ones then, or else we're going to go over here and deal with across the board. So uh, again, you have to have that conversation at some point. Yes, sir. Cut it to the current rate, which I think is roughly 35 percent. It was the lowest in the world at that point when we did that in the 1980s. Now that same 35 percent is the highest in the world because everybody else figured out how to beat us at our own game. So why can't you cut it again? Because uh, the president doesn't support it. It's it's it, it's a handout to the rich. Uh, Simpson Bowles actually fixes part of that as well. Simpson Bowles, the, the Simpson Bowles treatments of uh, I think close to 25 percent corporate rate under Simpson Bowles, which is one of the reasons we're looking more closely at it right now. Well, my brother works for Apple, believe me. I, I, the, the corporate rate, I understand. But the repatriation of overseas earnings, I understand. We, we tax corporations when they make money overseas if they want to bring it back in this country. We're the only developed nation in the world that does that. Um, and for that reason, they don't bring money back in this, in this country. And if they make a dollar in China, they leave it in China because they can reinvest it there effectively you know, without, without paying the American tax instead of investing here. So you're absolutely right. There's a lot of things that we could do. The difficulty that we face is that the president perceives it to be a handout for the rich. Um, and that's, that's, that's going to be the rhetorical battle that we fight as we push those issues. Well, look, it's a great point. The general's point is you've got to have somebody pay tax. And if you drive everybody away, who's going to pay the tax? Uh, I don't know if you, I, I know it's a difference story, but it's it's the same dynamic, which is, I think Phil Mickelson with me, uh, was out and he's a golfer, and we know, so with make, being very public, so he's leaving California um, to, 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 because he doesn't want to pay the tax anymore. And you know, you do that to enough people, there's nobody left to pay the tax. You know, we sit here and we say, well, it should be self-evident that that program doesn't work, and that, that states shouldn't do it. Self-evident that we shouldn't do something similar to corporations at the national level, but we still do it. And California's not going to change. Um, they want their money. Um, and the federal government is still there right now. We've not been able to convince enough people um, that the positions you've taken um, is the way to actually get more tax revenue, not less. Um, we'll continue to fight. And again, if, if Simpson Bowles turns out to be the vehicle for having that discussion, um, that would prove extraordinarily helpful. Right, let's, we'll, go, we'll go there, there, and then there. But, yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, the question deals with, with federal flood insurance, wind insurance, those types of things. Um, uh, that's actually not the problem in, this, in the current circumstance. <coughs> right.
Right. It is, Gardner's question is why should other taxpayers bear the burden if somebody else has not done the prudent thing and insured their own property? And it's a good question. I will, I will tell you that I'm relatively satisfied that rebuilding individuals' houses um, who did not have the appropriate level of insurance is not the problem. That's not where most of the money is. The money is that you're rebuilding bridges and sewer systems and the electrical grid. That's where you start to spend billions of dollars. Listen, I will be. I will. I, I cannot disagree with the fact that this amount of money is bigger than it otherwise would have been because it's New York and New Jersey. There's no question. They asked for 80 billion, by the way. Seriously, I mean, I, you know, what, what, let's let's ask for 150 and hope we get 100. I mean, I, I, I don't. But the, the insurance covered about I think it was 25 billion dollars of this. I don't even know if they factor that into the request. This happens so quickly. I know it sounds like it's dragged out, and it has. But $60 billion is a lot of money to spend. Uh, with, I don't think there was a single hearing on this. I don't think there was a, a single investigation, a single, nobody got a chance to ask the question, now is that six, 80 billion that you need, is that before or after private insurance is paid off? We didn't get a chance to ask that question. So um, again, is it, is it evidence of how the system is broken? Yes, by the way, what would New York and New Jersey tell you? They would tell you that um, when the tornadoes hit the Midwest, we didn't pay for it that when uh, Katrina hit New Orleans, we didn't pay for it. Uh, that when um, uh, Hugo came through South Carolina, we didn't pay for it. And absolutely right. Does that make it right? I don't think so. And I tried to make that point, that when Hugo went through, um, the national deficit was $3 trillion. When Katrina went through, it was eight. Now it's 16. And at some point, you have to stand back and say, wait a second, if we keep doing the, it the way we've been doing, that, that's how we got to $16 trillion. So, um, Again, if you get a chance to go, my floor speech, it's very rare that I actually think I'd say something worthwhile. Um, my floor speech um, on the Sandy thing, I encourage you to go take a look at it, mulvaney.house.gov. It's only three minutes long. Um, and it, it was, it, the, 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 the basic premise was this. We've gotten to the point now where we can't take care of our own people. We had to go to China and ask them to lend us money so that we could take care of our own citizens who need help. And if that didn't bother anybody else in that room, that's fine, but it, it certainly bothered me. Um, and I don't know if that got through to anybody or not. Again, I got 162 people to vote for, 157 Republicans and five Democrats. So I was wrong, but it was not, no Democrats, 157 and five. So it got through to some people, but not enough to make a difference.